official.streetsparks at gmail.com is how you want to contact us. Listen to us right here exclusively on YouTube, Street Smart Audio. A oh, fuck with us. Official.Street Smarts on SoundCloud and IG. Street Smart fan page on Facebook. Street underscore Smarts on Twitter. ECW Memories with Le Goofs. It's September, Goofs. Get your winter coats ready. Getting into this uh, Week in Wrestling History. Uh, as the weeks go by, see. it just shows that the neck beard and this nice guy does not have a lot of information for us this week is a rare nugget in the shit fest <laughs> that is the week in wrestling history as we see fit courtesy of pwinsider.com you know why he doesn't have a lot of um, wrestling news around this time of year right because around this time of year it's usually a lot of uh, cook offs and barbecues and food festivals and shit so you know he be having to get his grub up. Do you honestly believe that he's invited anywhere? Oh no, he's he just shows up. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> he brings his own silverware too. So. <laughs> we see you next year. Shout out to Nick Beasy. Shout out to Nick Beasy. August twenty seventh, nineteen ninety four. A pivotal moment in the history of wrestling as Eastern Championship Wrestling became Extreme Championship Wrestling during a show at the ECW Arena in Philly. The show was based around a tournament to determine a new Niggas with Attitudes World Champion. (laughs) ECW was an NWA member at the time. Current ECW Heavyweight Champion Shane Douglas won the tournament, but threw down the NWA belt and proclaimed himself the ECW World Heavyweight Champion. The name change from Eastern to Extreme took place and would be announced several days later on ECW TV by Todd Gordon. And the NWA, represented by the late Dennis Coraluzzo, was left confused. ECW had legitimately swerved the NWA with the whole angle to the point that Coraluzzo even taped an interview for ECW television afterwards, not realizing he was playing right into their hands. ECW separated from the NWA and began the Era of Extreme. Here are the results of the show. First round, Too Cold Scorpio defeated Chris Benoit in Benoit's ECW debut. 911 defeated Doink the Clown, Matt Bourne, in Bourne's ECW debut. Doink was the wild card opponent. What? Dean Malenko defeated Jobber Jap, Jobber Osamu Nishimura <laughs> in their respective ECW debuts. Shane Douglas defeated the Tasmaniac. In the semifinals, Tuco Scorpio defeated 911 via count out. When Doink came down and chaired 911 and revealed himself to be the franchise, Shane Douglas. Bro, that's hilarious. Shane Douglas defeated Dean Malenko. And in the finals, Shane Douglas defeated Tuco Scorpio to win the Niggas With Attitudes World Heavyweight title, but threw it down and proclaimed himself the first ECW World Heavyweight Champion, recounted by Gus Extreme Retro Review number 83. You're welcome. And also, Cactus Jack and Mikey Whipwreck, subbing for the living legend Terry Funk, defeated the Public Enemy to win the ECW World Tag Team Championship. Man, I gotta tell you, Paul really made Corluzo look like a core loser. Same day, 1999. <laughs> ECW gets their first national cable television show debuting on TNN, now Spike TV, with a one-hour show on Friday nights at nine p- or 8 p.m. The first edition is a recap of the history of ECW and an airing of the Rob Van Dam vs. Jerry Lynn ECW TV title match from Hardcore Heaven 1999. The show earned a .9 rating. During its run from August of 1999 to October of 2000, the show ratings would range from the low of .7 to a high of 1.3. Same day, 2005. Russell Reunion 2 was held at the King uh, was held in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. The neck beard. The neck beard. This nice guy filed the following part of this live report. The Midnight Express, Dennis Condry, Stan Lane, and Bobby Heaton, along with Jim Cornette, defeated the living legend, 
Yes. Terry Funk. Terry Funk. Dory Funk. Dory Funk. And Mick Dory Foley Funk. with Bobby the Brain Heenan when Eaton pinned Terry in a fun match. When all eight were in the ring, I joked that they should pass the mic around the ring and by the time they were done, we'd have our money's worth. Shut the fuck up, <laughs> neck beard. <laughs> His little two cents. Oh, I don't care about your two cents. Foley was dressed in full Cactus Jack regalia, but then got on the mic and told jokes, which for some reason always strikes a nerve I don't like personally. Who cares? <laughs> he was announced as Foley, though. Foley's mic, for, mic work was funny as he ripped on Dennis Condry from owing him $20 for eight years on Stan Lane for being a sexual deviant, a sexual deviant. and that Foley was forced to listen to through a hotel room wall with a glass pressed to his ear. What? And Bobby, well, I don't have anything to say about Bobby Heenan. At one point, all three members of the Midnight Express were trapped in spinning toe holes. Oh my toe God, in the worst wrestling spot in history. Are you fucking kidding me? The neckbeard recounts that Dory is still really fluid in the ring. How? What? Is he talking about the fluid in his knees? Is that what he's talking about? Because there's nothing fluid about uh, Dory Funk Jr. Terry took a header out the ring to the floor where he brawled up the aisle with beautiful Bobby. Foley pulled out Sacco towards the end. Cornette whacked Terry with the tennis racket to set up the pinfall. In the end, Cornette was left with the baby faces. The Funks both put spinning toe holds on him. When Cornette screamed, he got Sacco in his mouth. Pause. Then Pause. they pulled his pants down. Of, of course Pause. they did. And they want to call, uh, uh, Cactus wants to call beautiful Bobby Eaton a sexual deviant. No, no, no. Au contraire, mon frere. It is clear who the sexual deviants are, especially they have a fondness for always wanting to strip down dudes. The neckbeard finished the prose by saying that after Cornette was depanced, <laughs> he said it was entertaining. It was entertaining. Oh. Oh, well, then on that note, oh, we got some more. That's. I'll just say that's pretty hard to top right there. Pause. August 28th, 1986, Wahoo McDaniel defeated Tully Blanchard for the NWA National Heavyweight title in Los Angeles, California. Wahoo would be the final national champion as he would lose the title in a unif unification match to U.S. champion Nikita Koloff one month later. August 29th, 1982, Super Destroyer Scott Irwin not our Super Destroyers, wins a tournament for the Georgia National Heavyweight title. The title had been vacated by Paul Orndorff so he could train for an NWA world title match with Ric Flair, which he lost. <laughs> Interesting note, SummerSlams 1988, 1992, and 1994 were held on the same day. Oh, there's a little fun little tidbit. What was the 1992 main event? 92 main event, SummerSlam. That would be... Uh, cha cha cha. 92 had to be Brett and somebody. Um, fuck. Brett and King Maple. That is incorrect. <laughs> Brett Bulldog. I wanted to say Brett Bulldog. Then why didn't you say Brett Bulldog? Because I thought I, I didn't remember him being the champion in 92. Oh, no, I always get 92 mixed up with 93. 93 was the year Hogan left, right? Yes. Okay, so that's the summer I was thinking of. Oh, yeah, Wembley Stadium. Exactly. Yeah. August 30th, 1969, Mad Dog and Butcher Vashon defeats Crusher and Dick the Bruiser for the AWA World Tag Team titles in Chicago, Illinois, ending Crusher and Bruiser's fourth title reign. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Same day, 1986, the World Wrestling Federation ran the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago, Illinois, featuring the following results. 
Billy Jack Haynes defeated Jimmy Jack Funk via submission with the full Nelson. Jimmy Jack Funk. Oh, that must be Daddy Funk. <laughs> no, that was uh, uh, Jesse Barr. <coughs> that was who? Jesse Barr. Oh, he, he's a wannabe Funk? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the power of the devil, you cannot underestimate, underestimate. you know what I'm saying, the reach and the influence that Satan has on certain motherfuckers, man. It's sad. And Pedro Morales pinned Dory Funk Jr. Yes. Justice does exist. August 31st, Mama Fuji's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Mama Fuji. 1950. Don Eagle defeats Gorgeous George in Columbus, Ohio to win the Ohio AWA World Heavyweight title to begin his second reign. There's an Ohio AWA championship. I was not aware that has just been added onto the list as I attempt to assemble every single championship in the state of Ohio and recreate the multiverse. In my own image. And the food will be my right hand man. And number one stooge. Same day 2000. JW Idol defeats Awesome Arpin awesome in Arp- Penceboro, awesome. West Virginia to win the NWA West Virginia slash Ohio heavyweight title to begin Idol's second reign and Arpin's fourth. At the same show, Viper wins his fourth NWA West Virginia slash Ohio hardcore title by defeating Mr. Attitude. When I win that belt, I'm chopping off that West Virginia shit. I ain't even fucking around with none of that. Same day, 2002. XPW held hostile takeover at Viking Hall in Philly. The only result that mattered... XPW World Heavyweight Champion, the franchise, Shane Douglas, defeated Terry Funk. Yes! To a no contest to retain the title. How do you defeat someone to a no contest? What the fuck, Neckbeard? You have one job. No, you have two jobs. One is not fall asleep on the toilet. And two is report the goddamn wrestling news. So which one is it? Did he win or was it no contest? And if it was a no contest, he couldn't have fucking won. Damn. September 1st, 1972. Johnny Valentine defeats Johnny Powers to win the National Wrestling Federation North American heavyweight title in Cleveland, Ohio. Ending Powers' third reign. That's a long ass name, but that's National Wrestling Federation North American Heavyweight Championship. You just made the list. Same day, 1977, Dory Funk Jr. defeats Cyclone Negro in Amarillo, Texas to win the Amarillo NWA International Heavyweight title, ending Negro's third reign and beginning Funk's second. I wonder how much he paid Negro to go over in that match. 1990. One of the most memorable angles in Memphis wrestling took place on a live Saturday morning wrestling broadcast on WMC-TV in Memphis, Tennessee. As Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert attempted to run down Jerry Lawler with his brother Doug's car (laughs) in a parking lot outside the studio. The car hit Lawler, who rolled over the hood and fell to the ground, suffering a bruised hip. Fans watching the show on television actually called the police (laughs) to the WMC studios to report what had happened. Oh, shit. I wonder... um did at what point did wrestling promotions start letting police departments in on that it was a work and shit when they had stunts like this and shit happen where cops had to get called and it was either go to jail or uh, tell them it's a motherfucking work and shit a future question we may bring up in street smart philosophy oh shit yeah Stay tuned. 2001, 
Darren Smythe defeats Dash Bennett in Parking, Parkersburg, West Virginia to become the first NWA West Virginia slash Ohio television champion. I thought this was a good idea. Why couldn't they put West Virginia with Virginia? The NWA West Virginia, Virginia television championship. Because Ohio is uh, big enough to be its own little motherfucking thing and shit. But it's cool that I'm going to right all the wrongs in the multiverse. 2007, World Wrestling Entertainment taped the 65th edition of ECW and the 420th episode of Friday Night Smackdown at the U.S. Bank Arena in Cincinnati, Ohio. ECW got a 1.6 rating on August 4th on Sci-Fi Channel. SmackDown got a 2.3 rating on August 7th on the CW. Oh, shoot, I remember. Oh, CW's still on, I think. Yeah. I'm going to have to uh, watch the 420th show just for its uh, n- numeric sig- significance and shit. And today, September 2nd, we leave you with an interesting tidbit. 1984. World Wrestling Federation World Heavyweight Champion Hulk Hogan versus UWA World Champion El Connect in Mexico City ends in a draw in a two out of three falls match. Hogan won the first fall via pinfall. Connect won the second via DQ. And the third fall ended in a double DQ. The match received a great deal of attention in Mexico. Had Connect had defeated... Oh, because Connect defeated Andre the Giant the previous February, and only Hogan's WWF title was on the line, giving Connect the chance to become a dual world champion. I wonder what uh, possessed Vince to let that get off and shit. Pause. Where only Pause. Hogan's belt was on the line and shit. Well, they wanted to establish Ty in Mexico for future, you know, future dates. I mean, if they weren't going to have a clear-cut um, winner anyway, why not go title for title? I don't know. That's just me. Maybe somebody feared a screw job. Oh, shit. Oh, that's from um, Hogan's angle? Yeah. Oh. You never know in wrestling. And on that note. <laughs> <laughs> on that nose. <laughs> You'll never hear this anyway. <laughs> Oh, that's. Uh, I have to remember to bring it back up then. Pause. 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 <laughs> and on that note, the Extreme Retro Review takes you. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, in a few, just for you, we give you the Extreme Retro Review. Peace. Peace. <laughs>